Hello everyone and welcome to my short tutorial on persistence curves. My name is Austin Lawson and today we're going to be answering a couple of questions. Um, first, what are persistence curves? Why do we use them? And how do we use them? So the tutorial today is going to consist of a little bit of presentation in this manner and we'll also take a look at um, actual implementation of persistence curves using a Python package that I've written. The main object that we're going to be dealing with today is a persistence diagram. And essentially, all we need to know about persistence diagrams for, for our purposes are that they are multi sets of points that lie above the diagonal in the plane. So essentially what we want to do, because we know persistence diagrams contain really important topological information, uh, ultimately as, as researchers and practitioners, we want to use these persistence diagrams in machine learning algorithms. But we're presented with a challenge when we try to do this because most modern machine learning algorithms assume that your inputs are coming from a nice space. However, what we know is that with certain natural metrics that we can put on persistence diagrams, the resulting metric space is not actually a nice space. This is a challenge for us to overcome. And luckily there are several solutions that exist to try to mitigate this, this issue. And specifically what we, we want to do at the end of the day is to transform a persistence diagram into something that's consumable by machine learning algorithms, meaning some topological information. A really popular way to, to go about this is through something called a functional summary or a vectorization. And at its core, a functional summary transforms a diagram into a function. And specifically of interest to us today is a one-dimensional functional summary, a real functional summary. And what this does is it takes a diagram and it maps it to a one-dimensional real valued function. So a popular example of such a 1D real functional summary is the kth persistent landscape. And you can get such a function for each level of, of K here. The main framework we're going to discuss today, as I mentioned, is called persistence curves. And so we're going to build this persistence curve by example before we look at the actual formal definition. So suppose we have some persistence diagram like the one you see here. Now, what we want to do is put a function on the points of this diagram. So the function that we're going to put on the points of this diagram is called the lifespan function or the persistence function. And essentially what this does is it maps each point to the diagram to its so-called lifespan or death minus birth. To turn this thing into a function, when we receive a t, say t equals three, we're going to cut a box. This box is called the fundamental box and it's an upper left quadrant whose corner lies on the diagonal. For the points that lie inside this box, we're going to add up the corresponding lifespan values in this case. So now we add these points up and we see that the value at t equals three is 6.7. But of course, there's nothing special about t equals three. In fact, we can have this t move anywhere. So essentially what we've now created is a function that adds up lifespans inside the fundamental box. This curve that we obtain on the right here is called the lifespan curve. Persistence curves generalizes this idea and creates a framework to generate many summaries based on certain choices made by the user. So persistence curves as an overview is a systematic way of generating one dimensional real functional summaries. Um, the, the process works the same as the example that we just did. Pick some function that maps your points to a number. Pick some operator that maps a multi-set to a real number. And then the persistence curve maps any diagram you give it to a real valued function. And that real valued function takes in some input t. It cuts the fundamental box at t and then it applies your uh, operator to the points, to the, to the function values of psi inside that box. Using the persistence curve framework, we can generate many summaries that, that can be useful in machine learning with topology. Uh, some explicit examples that appeared in the original persistence curve paper are the lifespan curve, the normalized lifespan curve, um, and, and the Betty curve, which has existed for a long time. 
but we can also generate uh, other popular summaries like the case persistence landscape or the uh, persistent silhouettes or the persistent entropy summary function. So this framework is, is very broad um, and it accomplishes the goal of being able to take topological information and feed it into machine learning algorithms. Coming up next, we're going to see how this process actually works in the persistence curve package for Python. So here we are in our Jupyter Notebook. And before we actually get to persistence curves, we're going to first go over some starting steps, um, especially for our explicit example today, which is a grayscale image. So as usual, in this first uh, cell here, we are importing some packages that we're going to need. Our example image today comes to us from UIUC text, and it's, it's an image of bricks. It's a 480 by 640 pixel image. Our next cell just uh, runs the, the um, function we created to get the diagrams by using Goody. So now we can get started with the persistence curve package. And the persistence curve package has a diagram function that transforms some persistence diagram to a diagram class. There are several parameters that come into the um, diagram function that I've listed here. We won't go through all of this in this video, but this um, notebook will be available for you to explore later should you choose to do so. Okay, so these are sort of the starting steps for getting, um, for dealing with the persistence curve package. You can see that I stored the uh, diagram um, resulting from, uh, the, the object resulting from this diagram function uh, into the value P0 that we use below to actually calculate some um, persistence curves. So the package itself has several built-in persistence curves that you can use. Uh, so essentially, to use any of these functions, what we want to do is, is feed in parameters for a one-dimensional mesh, and the parameters are the same as those in the uh, lens space function for NumPy. So we want to tell the function where to start, where to stop, and how many evenly spaced points in the mesh we want to compute. Here, we're computing the normalized life curve starting at 0, 255, uh, and 256 points evenly spaced. And when I run this, we can see that it's pretty quick. Um, this, these are 18,000 points. And it also gives us a nice plot of what this curve would look like on, on an actual grayscale image. So next, we're going to showcase the uh, landscape function. Um, and the difference between the landscape function and, and the rest of the built-in functions is that we also have to feed it this extra parameter k, which tells it the level um, to look at. I'm using list comprehension here to compute the first four landscape functions, and we're going to plot them all on the same plot so we can visualize them. The last thing I want to showcase is the custom curve option that the persistence curve package offers. And essentially, it has, in addition to the usual mesh inputs, we, we also have two user-defined functions that are fun and stat, which take the place from, if, if you recall from, from earlier in this video, uh, fun takes the place of psi, so our inputs are d, uh, x, y, and t, and stat takes the place of the operator t in, in the, uh, as far as what happens inside the fundamental box. So we can, we can define pretty much any function that we want and any stat that we want. So I've defined here a function that adds x, y, and t. So x will be the birth values of the diagram, uh, d will be the diagram itself, y the death values of the diagram, and t the, the input to the curve, um, the, the, the corner of the fundamental box, if you will. The stat function in this case um, is, is median. Uh, this, this extra step here is, is because sometimes we might be feeding this function uh, an empty list and it doesn't like that. So we need to tell it to return zero, but um, this, this is exactly the median function. And so we can use our custom curve function, which is just called custom curve, uh, input our function fun, our statistic t stat, and uh, our mesh parameters. Running this, we can immediately get a, uh, a curve. 
Thank you for watching this tutorial video. I hope you were able to get some information from this that might be useful to you as you go on to practice machine learning with topology. You can get the persistence curve package from, from my GitHub, which I'll have linked in this tutorial document. Uh, you can also get it from the Python package index by using pip install persistence curves.